Easter Sunday Mass. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have a great sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing those all oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our personal lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. 
Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. <clears throat> On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she, so she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, 
they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. Both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the, fir, at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the bearer clothed there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the bearer clothed there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the bearer cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who, ha who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not understand the scripture that he has to raise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know everybody might want to stay back there, but we have like eight seats in the front row here that are still available. Are they're free? You can just walk up to my homily if you want to. In the gospel today, all kinds of uh, different people have trouble recognizing the resurrected Christ because he's different. And we had John and Peter ran to see the tomb because Mary Magdalene was the first one there and saw that Christ's body wasn't there, so she immediately told the apostles so they could verify this. And John was faster. This is John's gospel, so he wrote it and then told us how he was faster. <laughs> He's a great, great gospel writer. He was faster, but he waited outside the tomb for Peter to get there first, uh, which is this uh, pretty amazing act of humility. The greatest thing in the history of the world just happened. Someone just rose from the dead um, who claimed to be the Messiah, and this radically alters everything, and Mary Magdalene is in hysteria telling him this, and he gets there first, and he stops, and he waits. Just like Mary Magdalene went to get Peter and John because they want to share the good news, and they also want to, um, in humility, not be the person that is ultimate decider. So John waits for Peter to go in first, and that humility that's in his heart gives him the gift of being able to recognize Jesus. He's the first one to recognize. He um, saw and he believed. He saw the empty tomb, and he just knew Christ rose from the dead. Um, this humility is uh, uh, what Christ teaches and gives, and humility is what allows our hearts to be open to receive his grace. There's a lot of things that happened at this church um, outside of my understanding, knowledge, capacity. Um, so we have all these different people that have worked for this Easter Mass. Our ushers have been seating people and helping people. Uh, they didn't force anybody into this front row yet. That's okay. But uh, we had people get all the stuff ready for Mass. Uh, someone painted the Paschal candle even. We have a, a decorating committee that decorates. So I just show up on Saturday for the vigil and surprise, everything's decorated and beautiful. So I have all these beautiful decorations up here. They also, this lamb is new. If you can't see it now, maybe when you come up for communion, which I, I didn't know we owned and uh, they put it in the middle and hasn't been here for Easter before. And it's a uh, interesting looking piece. It's, it's beautiful. It's just this like, little tiny innocent lamb with big eyes and we are reminded of the lamb the second reading talked about the lamb today that Jesus in all humility allowed himself to be a lamb led to the slaughter that Jesus replaces the lamb that was used at the Passover if you remember the the most important Jewish story in the time of Moses and slavery in Egypt, the 10 plagues afflicted the Egyptians, and the 10th plague was that death passed over Egypt, 
and all the firstborn were taken, but the Jewish people could paint the blood of the lamb on the door. So the lamb had to die, an innocent lamb like this, and use the blood. And you think, why would like an animal like this, why would its blood have enough power to prevent God from entering the house? I mean, the reason it had enough power is because it was borrowing power from the future of Jesus' blood that would eventually die. We drink the precious blood and we have the blood of Christ on our mouths, on our doors, protecting our souls. Jesus allows himself to be this image of kind of like this beautiful little super innocent lamb and enters into his passion in complete humility. And people are mocking him saying, you've done all these miracles, do something now. When he entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, everybody was expecting him to be this heroic king and he came in strong and he felt like he was going to be really strong. And then they're like, he's not strong. He's not waging war against Rome. He's not, he's not doing anything that's going to actually win for us independence or protect us from our enemies. He's acting like he's saying big words, but he's not doing anything. And then Pilate questions him, and he just allows himself to go through the process. He's arrested by Judas. He allows himself to go through the process. He sets up this ritual for us at the Last Supper, and then he's like an innocent, a beautiful, innocent lamb, like this little guy here. Um, and, and you feel bad, like why would we allow such a, a little, innocent, beautiful thing just to be killed? And that's what he looks like. But before we feel like really bad for this lamb, Jesus knows exactly what's happening. And he knows that even though he looks like a little lamb, he's too big and too strong. He's eternal. And, and death can't hold him. And so when he enters into death, death breaks open. It's a good image for you today. If you're doing an Easter egg hunt, when you're, when you're breaking open your eggs, this image of, of Christ entering into death and being God, he's too big for death to hold, and he cracks open death and allows us to have eternal life because death is now broken. But it's his humility um, is a different form of fighting that we don't think of when we're living in this world. Last night at the Easter Vigil, we have different readings. We read Isaiah chapter 55. And in that, it talks about just as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. So we have this image of how different heaven and earth are. And then he goes on to say, just like the snow and the rain come down from the heavens and they don't return until they've watered the earth and made it fertile and fruitful, so my word comes down from heaven and doesn't return till it accomplishes its mission. When we talk about the lamb changing it to the tomb and then surprisingly death can't hold it, it breaks it open, it breaks open the seals. We can only imagine how we are now and how the world is now. We can't imagine the way heaven envisions things. When we think about the rain and the snow coming down and, and watering the earth until it's fertile and fruitful, we have the image of Noah's Ark up there um, and how God watered the entire earth. Or we have the image from Genesis where everything is a formless void and water and how things grow in there. We think about even the beginning of the world evolutionarily, like there's a one-celled organism that's there, and that one-celled organism that's flooded in water cannot imagine even what a two, well, it can't imagine because it doesn't have a brain, but it also can't imagine what a two-celled organism might be like, or a multiple-celled organism, or it can't imagine what something living on land might be like, or it can't imagine how complicated a human is. Even now today, like, a little animal can see us, but it can't understand what we're like. We're so different. Uh, Pope Benedict even said, when we're talking about death and the resurrection in heaven's way, a body that exists now on earth is so different from a body that will exist in heaven, it's almost like an evolutionary step to a new species. It is like a different species that happens when we pass through death. St. Paul describes 
what's going to happen at death in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he talks about just as there are different bodies that we understand now, there's animal bodies, there's human bodies, there's heavenly bodies like stars and the moon. So it will be that there will be different bodies at the resurrection. And just like the heavenly bodies have different light, like the sun and the stars are different in brightness, so it will be at the resurrection. That the bodies that we will have when we die will be different. We will be like a seed. These bodies are just a seed that you put into the ground. And like if, you, if a, you're a child or you're at school, you've never seen a seed grow before, we put the seed in the ground. And if you've never seen it, you have no idea that a giant plant or a tree could come out of a seed. And you put it in the ground and you just put it in dirt and you flood it with water, like the rain comes down or the snow comes down. And it does its work and it does a work that we're not capable of doing. Water can do it. I can't do it. I can't just make the seed grow. I can water it and the water can do it but I can't. That's how God's grace works. It's something beyond us. I can't water. I can't be water. I can water it, but I can't be water. God allows it to enter into the water, and just like the single cell becomes something bigger and that it couldn't have imagined before, the seed becomes a plant, and it grows. It can even produce fruit. So will our bodies be. Our bodies go into the ground and God will water them with his grace, and on the last day we'll be raised up, and our bodies will be changed. St. Paul says we will all be changed. We will all be changed. On Easter we're celebrating. We thought and feel bad that Christ was this lamb that died, but he enters into death and manifests his glory and the glory of the resurrected body. He looks different. Only John recognizes him in his humility. And then Mary Magdalene will recognize him in her humility. We too in our lives are able to be humble on this earth because we know that we will change. That whatever injustices occur on this earth to us will be minuscule in comparison to the glory that God will give us. And knowing that we all will be changed gives us the breathing space to be more gracious and humble, to receive love from God, and to be able to love God back and love each other in a confident and hopeful way. So on this Easter, we have these images of the Lamb. God allowed himself to be slain, to protect us, to break death, and to give us resurrected bodies. We will all be changed. We think of the Easter egg cracking open, and we think of the love and hope that that provides us. Please stand. Last night we had our our new Catholics be baptized, and so everybody renewed their baptismal promises. So today, instead of the creed, I'm going to have you renew your baptismal promises. We'll reject Satan three times and accept Christ three times. So the answer is I do to all of the questions. It's not on the PowerPoint, so you can memorize this. I do. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried? rose from the dead and is now seated at the hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may the grace of God keep you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the intercessions. On this glorious day, we look to the one with the power to raise the dead, asking for God's kindness and mercy upon all those in need. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole church, reborn in the risen Lord, 
that we may continually bear witnesses to the effect of resurrection in our life, giving us to, to the, and the world joy, hope, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the resurrection of our Lord may bring comfort to, to those who suffer, hope to those in despair, a new life to all those who are dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the risen Lord may move the hearts of all those who are in conflict with one another, whether in wars between nations, grudges between neighbors, bringing peace and reconciliation among all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord for victims of injustice and for those who continue to suffer the effects of past injuries, that they may be made whole by the altar of justice, we pray to the Lord. For the newest members of the church, especially those here in our community, that the good work the Lord has begun in them may continue to bear fruit, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have suffered loss or are alone this Easter Sunday, that they may be comforted by the eternal spiritual bond they have with those they love, we pray to the Lord. For all our personal intentions held in the silence of our hearts, and those written in the prayer intentional journal, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For today's Mass intention, for the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Almighty Father, we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. If we have any little ones, you can come up to start the collection by giving the Noah's Buddy collection. Just remember where you came from so you can go and find your parents.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the Exalt with paschal gladness, O Lord. We offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, will bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace. Be with everybody. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand here in my life. For I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, keep me safe from eternal life.
Let us pray. Okay. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.